Well, good afternoon and welcome to our readings and carols for 2020. This is going to be very different for us this afternoon this year, uh, but I'm glad and I hope you will enjoy what we seek to do before the Lord this afternoon as people take part in our readings and carols. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, please remember our reflections, which will be released over the next few days. Um, and please follow along on YouTube uh, and our Facebook page. And then on Christmas Day, this will be online. Uh, there will be no one in the church, but we've put together a short service of thanksgiving for God's blessing to us in the arrival of our Savior in Jesus Christ. So please come and join us through our YouTube channel, uh, and uh, you'll be able to click onto our website uh, to link into that video at 10.30 on Christmas morning. So let's come and let us worship God this afternoon. And we have an opening prayer today that is led by Pearl and Evan Scott. Let us pray. O Lord, the God of our ancestors, may you be praised for ever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, for this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things, and we thank you that in all that is happening in our world today, you are still the one who is in charge. Help each one of us to remember that as we face the week ahead. Let us just rejoice as we remember the greatest gift. Fill our hearts with thankfulness, all giving thanks for your great love for us, all giving thanks for your only Son. Thank you for our families, fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters. Help us to appreciate every moment that we have together, to know they are a blessing to us. We pray for our wider family in Christ, for the people who make up this church in Greystone, for the people in Antrim, for the work that goes on here. Lead us through your Holy Spirit. Bind us together and to you. Fill us with your love. We thank you for Johnny and all the Moxon family who have enriched us. We ask that your spirit continues to lead them as they start a new ministry in a new place and in a new year. We pray for Roberta and Jason and the work they do in your name in Greystone, for the session as they plan for the future. Lord, guide them and lead us just as you guide and lead the next family and minister who will come to us in the future. Make us stronger together until that time. We bring our health service to you. We pray for their safety and we pray too for all those that they are caring for, especially those of our own church family. We thank you for the dedication and hard work that has gone into developing vaccines. And we praise you that we can begin to hope for the time when the virus will be over and life can be more normal the time when we can be reunited with family and friends, when, as a church, we can meet together in your house to enjoy fellowship and worship you, our God. And then we look forward to that time when, because we have trusted in Jesus' finished work on Calvary, we will be united in heaven with you for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you to Pearl and Evan for opening our time together in prayer. We come to our first reading, and uh, uh, we have Leonard and Irene coming to read God's word for us. Isaiah 9, verses 2, 6, and 7, prophesying Christ's birth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and who he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Leonard and Irene. We're going to sing our first congregational carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs> second reading and that is taken from Luke's Gospel chapter 2 and verses 1 to 7 and George and Margaret are going to come and read for us. Christ's birth. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to, be, to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thank you to George and Margaret. And now we have something a little bit different. Anne Crawford is going to come and read for us. 
Christmas memories. It's many, many years ago since Jesus Christ was born. Yet his birth is still remembered by us all on Christmas morn. And long ago the bells rang out far across the land to herald in a newborn king to sit at God's right hand. We all were told about him while at our mother's knee and of all the people that he helped, just folk like you and me. These deeds are not forgotten at this time of the year as we celebrate his birthday, which is drawing very near. It's sometimes hard to think of him as just a little child who was so kind and gentle and so very meek and mild. Yet that is how we think of him and how he does appear as someone nice to talk to, who listens and who's near. Christmas is a sad time for many of us here who have known the loss of loved ones and those we held most dear. Yes, Christmas is a sad time for those of us on earth and then we think of Jesus and the wonder of his birth. The angels sang, the shepherds talked of the greatness of it all and that he was born in Bethlehem and in a lowly stall. There was no pomp or splendour, but the stars shone clear and bright. Crowds flocked to pay their homage on that bleak midwinter night. The snow was gently falling, the world was hushed and still, for a king had come amongst us with a promise to fulfil. And now it's Christmas time again, let hearts and voices sing, and on our knees a thank you to the one who's Christ the King. As this old year draws to its close, let's look into the new and think of all the good deeds that we could really do such as asking God into our homes and doing our very best to stretch our hands in welcome to such a special guest. Thank you, Anne, for that wonderful reading. We're going to sing again together in our congregational carol, Silent Night. <laughs>
is one of my favorite carols. Come now to our next reading, Luke chapter 2, Angels Tell the Shepherds, and Richard and Rachel Marcus are going to come and read for us. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who is lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as it, just as they had been told. Amen. i 
Wise men came to worship. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star had, that after the star they'd seen in the east, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with its mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they stopped, then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another route. Thank you, Robert and Frida. Two of our, our young people, uh, Beth and Lauren, took part in an event in the SSE arena last year. And uh, uh, Beth sang this song, uh, accompanied by Lauren on the piano. Mary, did you know?
wonderful, wonderful voice and accompaniment from Lauren and Beth. Come now to our next and our final reading this afternoon, and this is from the McCulloch family. The reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1, 14, and 10 to 13. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh, and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son. He came from the Father, full of grace and truth. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognise Him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. Amen, Ellie. That was just wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to come and pray again. And Desi and Irene Lutton are going to lead us in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we come with thanksgiving before you this morning for all your blessings to us. We thank you for this Christmas season when we can say, Emmanuel, God with us knowing that you are with us each day in all we do. We especially thank you today for the NHS and those frontline staff who have given their all in helping very ill and dying patients. We pray that they will know an extra special blessing at this Christmas time. For friends and neighbours who have helped others in so many ways, we thank you for their love and compassion. Help us to think about the people we interact with, to pray for them as we show your love, even in small ways. We remember this morning those in our families and congregation who are going through difficult days. We ask for your strength for those who are receiving treatment which can leave them tired and sometimes frightened. For the lonely and bereaved, we pray that they might experience the power of your love and peace in their hearts. Due to COVID-19 and lockdown, many people are still ill and unsure about going out and about. We pray that they will know your presence with them at this uncertain time in their lives. Life is presenting us with many new and unfamiliar challenges due to the effects of the onset of the coronavirus pandemic upon the population of many countries worldwide. Each country is struggling to control the virus due to its location or its climate and because of this much hardship and suffering is having to be endured by many peoples. Lord God, today we offer up to you this state of severe suffering and ask for strength and care for all the workers of the different agencies, not only here in our land, but throughout the world, who are trying to bring help and assistance where it is most needed. The moderator's appeal this Christmas is to be used to aid this work. We pray our congregation will be generous in giving financially and devout in prayerful support. Life without change would surely be dull and uninteresting as the end of the year approaches we think of our country's situation within the Brexit talks. Give to those involved in the discussion of the future understanding, wisdom and compassion in all their dealings with one another. Then too, O oh Lord, we are about to face change once more, 
when the minister, the Reverend John Markson, and his family take up the work of extending God's kingdom in the congregation of Ballyclare. We ask for your blessing on this move for him and his family. During the vacancy, we ask that you will lead us, guide us, and strengthen us in our fellowship as we work together through the various stages. Thank you for all that the Reverend Moxon has given to this congregation during his time with us in Greystone Road. Our Father, we come to you, the one who never changes, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we thank you again for the blessings of this Christmas season. Christmas will be different for many people this year. Through illness, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, the furloughed and the unemployed. So amidst the lights, the tinsel and the gifts, help us all to keep our focus on the greatest gift of all. Jesus, our Saviour, the light of the world. O oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore, adore him, Christ, Christ the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you to Irene and Desi. If there is one thing we know, this Christmas has been unlike many of us have ever experienced in our lives. Some of us might remember the years of rationing or the times when you literally just did get an orange or a little piece of coal. Thankfully, those times are gone. There's still many in need this Christmas, and we have had the privilege of being able to help. But we know that many kids will get a lot more than they even know what to do with. I wonder what present the children, no matter what age you are, are looking forward to most this year. I want to talk about presents just for a few minutes. Imagine opening a present on Christmas morning from a friend, and it's a dieting book. Nearly throwing it through the Christmas tree, you quickly take another present and undo the wrapper and find it is another book from another friend. Overcoming Selfishness is its title. If you say to your friends next time you see them, once you think about what they are really trying to do by giving these books and you've retrieved the recipe book from the tree, you say, thank you. You are, in a sense, admitting, I am maybe a little bit overweight and maybe a little bit obnoxious. In other words, some gifts are hard to receive because to do so is to admit you have flaws and weaknesses and that indeed you may need a little bit of help. Maybe on some occasion a friend who figured out that you were in financial trouble, came to you and offered you a sum of money to help you get out of that predicament. If that was, has ever happened to you, you probably find that to receive that gift meant swallowing your pride. At Christmas, we celebrate the fact that there has never been a gift offered that makes us swallow our pride to the depth that the gift of Jesus Christ requires us to do. Christmas means that we are so lost, so unable to save ourselves, that nothing less than the death of the Son of God himself could save us. We need Jesus to get us out of the predicament we find ourselves in. 
that sense of deep down loneliness we can feel even though we add more people, add more money, more success, more busyness, never sitting still, never being quiet, always having something playing in the background, but it never cures the deep down loneliness we can feel even at such times as this. Why? Because we are lost. And while the society in which we live says, you got to find yourself, you got to be strong, you got to snap out of it, you got to be kind, the more kind you are, the better it will be. The more you give, the more you'll solve your own deep down loneliness. And while these are all good suggestions, they really don't answer the problem. You see, the gift of Jesus has already been given. God with us, Emmanuel. It was given 2,000 years ago, and he has never left us. He brings hope to a lonely, struggling world, looking for significance, especially in these days. In the last reading that the McCulloch's read for us, verse 12 says this, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So I believe the greatest present that you can receive this year is the presence of Jesus, to believe in him and what he came to do for you, to know that you are not alone you can have his presence in your life forever and ever. No fairy tale, but life-changing truth. So is it little wonder that we are meant to celebrate Christmas? This is the real Christmas. God with us. And the greatest present we can ever receive, for it removes deep down loneliness. God with us. We're going to watch a short video. together with the concluding carol as we sing Once in Royal David City. <laughs>
for joining us for our readings and carols this year. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.